This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this week's episode, Jonathan is taking another look at some of the weaponry from Rainbow Six Siege. So, how does this thing look? I'm trying, to hard, to, trying hard to look past the, the lurid green grid pattern and whatever the hell's going on with the buttstock that looks like someone stubbed out three enormous cigars on it. No idea what's going on there. If there are any other games, guns or mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comment section below. And for something a little bit different, make sure to check out our new series, Mind Games, a show that explores the psychological impact of gaming from our relationship with loot boxes to the psychology behind horror games. Right, time to check out more of the guns of Rainbow Six Siege. We've got a nice good view from the side and well that's not an AK-74M or otherwise. So why is this not an AK-74M? Well uh, let's, let's focus on what's right. So the magazine looks about right for the earlier sort of plum coloured 5.45 mag uh, magazine. The ammunition looked like it could well be 5.45 so that's that's fine. The furniture is pseudo magpul. We've got some sort of optical mount sight mount replacing the rear sight leaf which is a real thing that you can do on AKs rather than putting it on the top cover. We've got an absolutely huge AKM style slant compensator on the front or that's what it looks like. Gas block area well and the top cover for that matter AKM pattern. I'd have to compare with a, with a Romanian one to see if it's close but I suspect it's a bit of a fudge because all of that rambling boils down to this is a sort of non-specific 5.45 caliber AK. It doesn't have the classic Muzzle brake of an AK-74. The markings are obviously wrong. The receiver's not the right, quite the right shape. It's the wrong top cover for a 74M, and the furniture's not 74M. There's some interesting ejection going on on this thing. I happen to have uh, paused here on what looks dangerously close to a stoppage because we've got some very some non-energetic ejection, shall we say? And so this case is barely making it out of the gun in time. And of course, if it doesn't do that, then the bolt will trap it. Your classic sort of stovepipe jam is where you have a case sticking out the action. The bolt's not gone forward. Yeah, so it's attempt, it'll attempt to pick up the next round, but it won't get it chambered because you've got the previous one still sticking out. Now that obviously hasn't happened because it's not programmed in to do that. I, I sometimes pay attention to things like ejection patterns and that just stuck out for me. And the recoil is probably okay. It would depend very much which what muzzle device was fitted, and this appears to just be a generic birdcage type flash suppressor, which wouldn't really have any effect on recoil mitigation. The traditional AK-74 muzzle brake is very effective. This is behaving more like it's got that on it. All right, I don't remember the AMT Auto Mag being in this game, because that's what this is. Here is the AMT Auto Mag. I can barely see over it. It's huge. So this is the, the 44 AMP Model 180. There are different models, but I do believe this is the one that's being represented here in Siege. And you see, I think, that they have done really quite a good job. It's a very distinctive looking pistol. They could have taken the modern warfare route and made it look legally different or just different for artistic reasons, but they haven't. They have pretty faithfully represented the gun. Should they have bothered? Well, me as a tactical shooter fan, no, I don't think they should have. Um, I don't think this has any place in a game like this, but that's just me being an increasingly grumpy old man. I will say the magazine changes seem a little bit slick for this. This is essentially a target pistol, and it's really from an era before rapid magazine changes were a thing, really. So the, the magazine release is up here. You'd need thumbs like a, a bat. That's, that's probably not even a good analogy, but that's, I'm gonna go with it. To be able to reach that button, um, you'd have to really realistically, for a quick magazine change, use your support hand thumb, and it's recessed quite, quite heavily into this grip as well. So you've really got to get in there and shove that and then the magazine does not drop free. You have to rip that out. So your, your classic tactical reload is not so much a thing on this. All right, that's quite unusual, not least because it has what looks somewhat like an FN 
GL40 grenade launcher on the bottom of it. Not commonly seen on sniper rifles or precision rifles generally. This is very futuristic looking. The grip is quite a weird shape. The stock isn't too unusual for, for modern precision rifles where they have that skeletal look with various adjustable features on them. But I think, again, I think that's an original design too. A very heavy barrel with a large three-chambered muzzle brake, is it? And the 300 in the name, I assume, refers to 300 Win Mag. Not quite sure the significance of the XO on the side, but uh, let's have a look. Ready for level. So the underbarrel launcher, I did notice it had no visible rifling in the bore. Is that an oversight or could it be some sort of non-lethal thing? But then I also thought this is a sniper rifle. You're going to be at potentially 100 100 meters or something away. You, well, A, cu coupling lethal and non-lethal on the same weapon is usually a bad idea. And secondly, it's unlikely to have, yeah, the range doesn't really match there. But I was edging the right direction because this thing appears to be for battering down doors, boarded up windows, that kind of thing. So you can then engage from outside. I suppose from a sort of SWAT point of view, you know, people think of precision rifles as being thousand yard or whatever rifles, and they can be, but for law enforcement, very, very unlikely you're going to be going out beyond even 100 meters, to be honest with you. Um, you need to be able to positively ID your target, you need to be able to maximize the chance of hitting them if you do have to open fire. So it's not totally beyond the realm of possibility that you would, would put some sort of device like this on the same weapon. It's just highly unlikely. Okay, this is something I'm not at all familiar with. I know the designation, I've, I've seen it before in pictures, but this is a, a relatively obscure, or at least in the West, Russian pistol design. So this this is, I don't know, you can stare at it and try and compare it to various Western designs, but it's kind of its own thing. It is just a pistol at the end of the day. It doesn't do anything particularly special. I'm sure the designers would disagree with me there. Seeing it in use there, it's incredibly what some people call flat shooting, which doesn't refer to the trajectory of the bullet, that what they mean is the muzzle stays level when you shoot and the recoil is as, as straight back as possible. Now that's a function of the, the caliber, the design of the pistol, and more than anything else, the position and hold of the shooter and, and their wrist and arm strength as well to be fair but some things are flatter shooting than others and i don't know if this is a fair representation but it's extremely flat shooting too much so i would say but what you typically see with a hat with a pistol is you'll get some some muzzle rise but through a combination of ergonomics and skill those sights return to level on each shot but they don't stay rock solid straight the whole time unless you're shooting something like a 2-2 pistol or 22 pistol really fast have got for you our only select fire p90 we have a couple that were actually in police trials and they're identical and they're semi-auto only this one goes up to 11 or rather to automatic it's not labeled automatic interestingly but it does in fact go there so how does this thing look well i'm trying to hard to try hard to look past the the lurid green grid pattern and whatever the hell's going on with the buttstock that looks like someone stubbed out three enormous cigars on it no idea what's going on there the magazine looks a bit melty i don't know if that's a skin or a mistake but the magazine looks like that it's quite smooth a little bit of a textured finish to it for grip yeah it, it's a it's a pretty solid effort some of the angles don't necessarily it's a, it's a bit too flat in various places. So this foregrip here, this iconically weird curved foregrip actually has a sort of triangle flat to it here and then it goes uh, full round basic, basically. In, in the game, it's very flat all the way around. This is the level of detail we have to look at guns with in this job. I suppose what I'm saying is it's a little bit off, but not really so you'd notice unless you were staring at a real one like I'm fortunate enough to do. Another Russian weapon we don't yet have, the PKP or Peshenegg 6P41, without looking it up, will be the uh, GRAU index 
designation for this weapon, which is another good way to name a weapon in a game without actually naming it for whatever reason. Usually legal. Interesting paint scheme. Uh, I can't think that's standard with uh, heavily referencing the former Soviet Union. I think it's a good, without having one to show you, pretty good effort on the PKP, which is, as I think we've covered before, a sort of evolution of the PKM. And this one is the bullpup kit version. Trigger group is all, is shunted forward, uh, making the whole thing a lot shorter, but keep preserving the barrel length. That's what a bullpup is. There may or may not be a book on the subject. Hostile activity. Ready. Friendly, last operator standing. Well, I can't speak from direct experience on, on how the PKP handles, but nothing leaps out as particularly weird. Uh, if you're going to assault with a, with a machine gun, this one makes a lot of sense. It's got a heck of a lot of punch. It's nice and compact. The, the balance will let you keep better control of it firing it, whether from the hip or the shoulder. Not usually the thing to do with a belt-fed machine gun, but it has been known. Although, having said that, most machine guns with the intent for this kind of, again, a, a assault purpose, as it were, tend to be in smaller calibers for better control. Ah, FN Minimi, or actually looks to be an M249 specifically with that heat shield handguard on the front. Just uh, looking at the reload there, um, I was a little skeptical that they'd, I thought they'd fudged that a little bit by just pressing on the mag catch, but as you see there, you can in fact just tap it with the thumb and that's enough to dislodge it, at which point you can just pull it out. So a more positive way to do it would be to press and pull, but the way it's been done by the player character is actually fine. Um, so something that crops up quite a bit with video game weapon design is you're often working from, even if you've had access to the real thing, you're often working from 2D images, maybe just a left and a right at worst case. And so you tend to miss details like this. So this, this welded on um, mounting lug on the front here, on the real gun is actually not just a solid tube. It's a, flan it's a small diameter tube with flanges on it and the bipod legs actually go within those flanges you can see it's sitting inside there now why am i going on about that well these guys have they've got the weld they've modeled the weld on the tube really nicely but the actual tube is solid and there's no way you could fit a bipod to this even if you had a handguard with a cutout to accept it which they also don't now that's a big deal because you would not ever use an LMG or purchase an LMG that did not have a bipod. It's critical to its function. Even if you think that you're going to use it primarily as an assault type weapon, you're still going to want the bipod. It's not worth getting rid of it. I don't normally comment too much on tactics or TTPs and stuff because I have no no practical experience with it and it's not my direct remit. But I couldn't help but smile at the hanging off the side of a an uneven wall from some sort of mega repelling system that is able to stay in place but also roll across the top of the wall and actually a bit unfair gameplay wise as well. You can basically stay in cover all the way around the perimeter of the wall and where it comes back to my relevance is whilst also shoulder firing a light machine gun and therefore having no hands and just using your feet. It's it's very much action movie fair, but I've never even, even in an action movie, you won't see free traversing repelling while firing a machine gun, I don't think, or not yet anyway. You wouldn't be able to pull that off in real life very easily, even for a stunt. All right, this is another weird one, very strange. It looks a lot like a, an Ingram-based design. Now, there, there is a, an Ingram-derived design from Masterpiece Arms in the States that looks quite a bit like this. Every detail's different, but the fact that the lower looks polymer uh, and the configuration of it, uh, the fact that it's elongated, the arrangement of the cocking handle not being on top but being on the side, it's all quite reminiscent of that design. But strictly speaking, this is a fictional gun.
we have got some astonishing recoil there. Now, I'm not saying it's unrealistic because if this thing is 9mm by 19 and fires at what sounds like 1000 rounds plus per minute, then it may well be that difficult to control. That said, we have got a foregrip on there and with a bit of skill, I'd expect you to be able to keep, at least start with a burst that would be on target, on a man size target at whatever this is. Whereas this is wandering all over the shop as soon as, the, as, soon as Dave pulls the trigger, basically. So it seems like they have programmed in quite a lot of recoil to make up for the uh, blistering rate of fire. Absolutely typical of a video game compact SMG slash machine pistol to, to treat them that way. Otherwise, why would you use anything else? Insert Jurassic Park reference here, because it's the good old SPAS-12. Now, the first thing I noticed about this is, like ours, this gun has the rotating safety. This is actually was actually recalled. It was a dangerous design that, if I remember rightly, could fire when you rotated it to fire. Not ideal for a safety catch. The other thing that I noticed right away, um, now as far as I know, the SPAS-12 was never made with an integral Picatinny rail, which on this looks to be part of the forging or the casting or whatever this is meant to be in the game. The real real gun has nothing here. Same goes for the heat shield. Now you could easily attach a particular Picatinny rail to this heat shield. Guess that's how you probably would do it if you were trying to update this thing with a red dot sight. You wouldn't. You'd leave the receiver alone and you would use the heat shield. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. Uh, we've even got a bit of uh, wear and rust on this thing. Uh, so we do get this quite distinctive wear pattern, which is not quite well represented on the, on the heat shield from the, the movement of this grip because although I suspect in this game it is semi only, this was designed to be either semi-automatic or pump action, meaning that you could load rounds that wouldn't otherwise have enough energy to operate the gun, like breaching rounds for example. And that's done with a push button under the pump grip, you push down, pull it back, latch it into place and that has now engaged with the action bars effectively to turn it into a pump action. Not that many shotguns have that capability, uh, and, but it's one that's rarely represented in video games because what would be the, well, I say what would be the point, or nearly did, there'd be every point in Siege because in theory you could switch to breaching rounds and have to use it as a pump, which means if you breach through the door and you're left holding a shotgun, suddenly it would be a pump action, slower to operate gun, firing less damaging, well, arguably, against body armor, less damaging rounds. So that could actually be, have been a gameplay feature. Right, bit of an oddity here. Well, actually, it's an oddity in, in the real gun world, just as it is in games. I can't recall having seen one before. It is an AR, well, would you call it an AR-15? Probably not. AR pattern shotgun, hence it's massive and chunky. It follows the ergonomics, the basic design architecture of the AR-15, AR-10 series of rifles, but it has a massive thin wall barrel, a huge magazine well, and designed to take 12 gauge shotgun cartridges but it will be familiar in terms of operation to anyone that's used an AR pattern rifle, which is a lot of people these days. Quite an interesting interesting thing to be in this game. Um, not aware of any serious users that have uh, adopted them. There, there are too many reasons, I think, to use other self-loading shotguns for that type of purpose. Very slick reload there with the, again, the, the bolt not holding open on its own, which is a surprise. And then uh, flicking the gun back the other way to, to send the mag flying out. It looks cool. Um, is it worth doing? I don't know. You'd best ask, ask us what team. Right guys, thank you for watching. Please do, if you can, come and visit us here at the Royal Armouries. We have three sites in different, in different parts of the country. Also our social media channels and our own YouTube channel. You can find me and some more guns from the collection over on that, as well as some more interesting stuff coming along soon that is not guns. In any case, thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next week.